afternoon, good evening. Welcome to Beyond Einstein. This is the final Jamboree event of World Year of Physics 2005. CERN is certainly welcome to have this uh, last event of the year of physics. What we like is to go beyond the Einstein. And uh, for that, we should make sure that the science become popular. And the science will be, should be recognized as part of the universal culture. Now it's time to travel east, very far east, to Taipei. Welcome to Taiwan, Taipei. I think uh, you are uh, on the way. It was in 1905 when Einstein had his great ideas about the theory of relativity here in Bern. This was the reason why, a hundred years later, the government of Bern wanted to have a large exhibit. Welcome to the Einstein exhibition here at the Bloomfield Science Museum, focusing on the life and work of Albert Einstein. Buonasera, buon pomeriggio da Ginevra. Buonasera a voi, facciamoci anche sentire qui da Venezia. Okay, welcome to the Beyond Einstein webcast. Uh, good afternoon, good evening, good night, good morning, I don't know, with all the people that are watching us. Now do we have Vanta Finland? We have a school class here uh, uh, who is very interested in particle physics. Yes. Well, what happens if you travel through a wormhole? Rolf, do you feel like answering that? Well, I actually, wormholes are completely theoretical speculations. So, I mean, in fact, neither theoretical nor experimental, there is any evidence that such a thing exists. There have been speculations about wormholes being some sort of the other end of black holes. And so um, you might travel from one universe to another universe or so. But um, it is really um, almost in the question of philosophy. Yes, so yes, indeed. David Gross and Gerhard Tucht. We are video conferencing at the same time with you in Brussels, with Kerkrade in the Netherlands, with London, and with Finland, Vanta. Yes, there they are. Go ahead, ask your question. Was there some form of time or space before the Big Bang, and how do we know that? It was discussed just a few minutes ago, but uh, there's, I don't think, a general consensus. Some people think that it actually was a bounce rather than a bang. Some people think that time became Euclidean. That's what uh, I'm talking about. Yes, more or less what you're talking about. But, uh, uh, opinions diverge. I haven't yet spoken out what I think, but uh, <laughs> in the meeting, but uh, I think there really was just a sharp beginning, or possibly a time such that the replacement time to minus time makes no difference. It could be that uh, there simply was a symmetry point at the uh, at time zero. So time minus ten seconds is the same thing as time plus ten seconds. There could also be an option. So, I think the truth of the matter is that it's probably a very premature question and uh, we still have to understand the laws of physics a lot better before we can meaningfully discuss the boundary conditions. So right now all we are doing is speculating. A warm welcome from Imperial College here in London. Yes, I'm Gareth Mitchell and uh, I'll be with you along with uh, a host of talent and experts, visionaries and pioneers over the next two hours to bring you discussion on neutrinos, so a large discussion on very small particles, and uh, also discussion of grid computing. We are going to visit a very remote place on this planet, the South Pole. It followed from the special theory of reality. Hi, uh, I'm Clem Bragg, as you just said. I'm here with John Kovac and Steve Payton. So I'd like to tell you a little bit about the cosmic microwave background telescopes that we have here at the South Pole. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Live from the University of Basel in Switzerland. The World Wide Webcast is here as a guest of the National Center of Competence in Research on Nanoscale Science. So thank you for being with us. A gravitational wave deforms space. And this deformation of space works as follows. You have a, a separation of space, you have a stretching of space in one direction, and you have a, a squeezing of space in another direction. The, uh, you can see this on, uh, on the screen here. This is a little uh, animation of the uh, Pisa Tower. You can see the effect of a gra gravitational wave. Thank you. Thank you very much. 
Um, I want to tell you that you are at Fermi Lab. This is the world's greatest laboratory. We have some friends abroad in Switzerland. Are you ready for a trip into space and time? We are now going to do one. We are going to the very far end of our planet. We are going to Hobart, Tasmania, where it is already December 2. It's already tomorrow in Tasmania. And we have Paul Davies. Hello, Paul. Very nice to see you again. Hello from tomorrow. Hi, Paula. Hi, Nick. Hi, Michael. And welcome, everybody, to San Francisco. You found Albert Passport in the LHC channel at CERN. Absolutely, yes. And this is a Swiss passport, indeed. That makes sense. So on this, it's time to say goodbye to everybody. Goodbye to all the countries in the world that were looking at us. <laughs> good night, good morning, and bye-bye, everybody from beyond Einstein.